Aaron and Tyler with you on ESPN Bet Live. Week zero kicking off across the pond with an ACC showdown. Florida State and Georgia Tech tomorrow. Seminole, ten and a half point favorites, though at one point they were favored by 13. Total for this one has crept up slowly, now sitting at 55 and a half. All right, Aaron, mm-hmm. let's start with you. First game of the college football season. I, I kind ha- of wish I was there. Dublin would be awesome. A place I haven't been, but wanted to go I to. Get this. <laughs> I'm like, it's amazing, but I haven't football, been there yet. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a fun place to party, no doubt about that. And I'm sure yeah. there'll be some uh, Seminoles and Yellow Jackets party in there. But a little dabble for the first taste of Not college, college football. Kids. They would never do that. No. Uh, you got to play? Um, yes, in fact, I do. I'm looking at the first half <laughs> under 27 and a half points. You can shop this around. You can find it at 28 and a half on some of their books. But this comes down to a couple of things. And without even breaking down the game, like, let's just think about this. First game on the slate, college football. You think there's not going to be jitters, let alone jitters over in Dublin? Mm-hmm. This is a totally different ballgame, different time zone. Yep. So I do think that this is going to be slow at the beginning. I don't think they're going to come out firing by any means. I know the total has crept up. That's fine and dandy, but that first half total, baby, we are going under 27 and a half on ESPN bet, but you could shop it around and find it higher. Okay, I like that. It's playing into the handicap of, hey, it's kids. How did I have a Notre Dame again? Like, yeah, it's I mean, Ireland. It should be, you would think. I know they've done it before going over there, but Aaron I guess. Aaron Ireland forever, fun fact. I did not know that. Sorry, get to the picks. I'm, 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 I'm talking too much. Well, I'm learning Go something on. here. There's no other... <laughs> Aaron's had her coffee, as you can see. I uh, Anita, come on in here. What would be the play for you in Dublin? By the way, I, I do like where Aaron's going with that. Uh, the field that they're going to be playing on is a rugby soccer field, so there's like a lot of weird, it's a weird field and, and footing issues, so I do like the under, but I also love Georgia Tech getting the 10 and a half. Why not? They're a sleeper team in the ACC, right? They're returning eight offensive starters. They average 31 points a game. They've got one of the best offensive lines. They love to run the football or averaging 200 yards a game with King Hayes, that one-two punch. Meanwhile, for the Seminoles, um, they're breaking in a new quarterback. They reloaded. They lost 14 starters. They've had to overhaul that defense. And they were 61st against the run last season. New pieces to kind of get together. I think Georgia Tech can run all over them. So I love Georgia Tech here. Wouldn't be surprised if they win, guys. Wouldn't be surprised if they win. Give me the 10 and a half. I'm with you there. I agree. I'll take the rambling wreck plus those points. Obviously would have liked to get the 13, which was out there earlier. I'll lean towards the over after talking to Greg McElroy. Hopefully the game for you guys starts slow, but then we get a lot of second half scoring as they get the jitters out and maybe, as Anita pointed out, get used to the field they're playing on. But I know expectations are high for the Seminoles, but Mike Norvell has no easy task in front of him trying to replace a ton of talent that left last year's team. Anita alluded to it. They lost 14 starters, 10 drafted to the NFL. This was the third, this program, Florida State, had the third most players drafted to the NFL. So not only were they losing talent, they were losing premium talent on both sides of the ball. Five on offense, five on defense. So again, I respect Norvell, and I think Florida State's going to be okay this year. But when you lose the starting quarterback, top two wide receivers, your best two defensive linemen, two starters at cornerback, I mean, that is a lot to replace. So I will take Georgia Tech plus those points. Again, if you can find something better than 10 and a half, please do. But that's probably gone in the market. Hmm. Like the over there a bit as well. So we'll see what happens. Can't wait to uh, kick it off tomorrow. We will have another ESPN bet live leading up to kickoff tomorrow. Yes, Saturday morning. shows Saturday are back. Saturday shows are back. So. I told my grandma that yesterday. She's like, why? I'm like, because college yeah, well, football starting. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, that's why. So You're one more time in? to talk about this game before it actually does kick off. But that's where we're standing right now. All right, last call in the college football landscape before the season actually does kick off. Maybe some futures you'd want to play before we see these numbers change. Here are some notable programs and their odds to qualify for the first ever 12-team playoff. And, you know, with the season kicking off in Ireland, where I'm sure there'll be a few pints going around, my last call pick is the team at the top there. I think Notre Dame, even at minus 170, Anita, that price is not exactly cheap. They're a good bet to make the college football playoff. Their schedule is not that imposing. They do have the tough start down at Kyle Field against Texas A&M. They do travel to USC. They Georgia Tech, they let to go down to Atlanta and the Mercedes-Benz Dome and take on Georgia Tech, who we just said might be better than most think. But their most difficult game on the schedule will take place in South Bend against the Florida State Seminoles, who we think might not be as good 
as they were a season ago. With Riley Leonard transferring in from Duke, I think this might be Marcus Freeman's best national chi championship contender that we've seen because Leonard's the real deal at quarterback. So with Notre Dame's cachet and a schedule that is manageable, if they win 10 or more games, I think they're a lock at minus 170 because of the eyeballs that they will bring. So that's why I think even though minus 170 is not my favorite price, Anita, you can make a move on the Irish right now. Uh, what about the Heisman race? Is there a name for you that people should be considering before we kick off? Yeah, Jackson Dart. Listen, I was up there right in Bristol. We had Sam Acho in studio. I love Ole Miss. I love Oregon. But the quarterback of Ole Miss, two things you know. You need a quarterback who performs well on a team that's going to win some ball games. Went 11-2 last season, won the bowl game against Penn State. He's coming back bigger and better now. Uh, this is an Ole Miss, Ole Miss team. They have one of the easiest schedules in the SEC out of all SEC contenders. Mark your calendar, November 9th, at home against Georgia. This dude beats Georgia. Watch out Ooh. that 10 to 1, 13 to 1, whatever it goes up to. Uh, that is going to come down. Jump on this now. Rebels got a lot of firepower. Top receiving core with Harrison Walker. And this is a young man who throws very few interceptions. Only six last year. Watch out. He is a treat to watch. Ole Miss is going to be hot. So I'm going to the window. Jackson Dart to win the Heisman this year. I know Stanford Steve was talking about Jackson Dart earlier this summer as a Heisman contender. I'll throw another one out there from the SEC as well. It's Tennessee QB Nico Iamaliava. Now, learn how to say the name. It's not easy. But at 15-1, to 1, this Tennessee offense is going to put up some numbers. We have seen that from Jock Heupel in his tenure down there in Knoxville. Remember that Hendon Hooker offense that was scoring 40, 45 a game? Ian Aliava was once upon a time the number one recruit in the country just a few years ago. We saw him get in and play for the Volunteers in the Cheez-It Bowl. How much?